I'm just curious to know what you're doing. And this is aside from all the debates I've had with rabbis and thousands of pages of interaction and emails back and forth with the rabbinic community. Oh, that's not your calling. Oh, okay, I got, got it, got it. And you're too busy putting out those hit piece videos to, to be focused on Jewish events. Got it, got it, okay, fine, all, all clear. This is Fair amazing. enough, let me just move those out of the way. Bruce Lawn. The ongoing civil war within Christian circles continues regarding the charismatics and the cessationists. Now, recently, Dr. Michael Brown came out and rightfully so, said that Benny Hinn needs to repent, which I'm 100% for. In that, people feel like Dr. Michael Brown and charismatics are naive and not as critical as we should be of certain false teachers with false his well, with, with histories of false prophecies, false miracles, and false repentances. And so in that, Dr. Michael Brown decided to clap back in true Dr. Michael Brown-esque fashion. Tyler Last Capone. week, I did a video explaining why I don't cater to critics and basically said, listen, we all have to give account to God. We all have to run the race God's called us to run. I, I can't tell you what race you're to run. You can't tell me what race I'm to run. Paul writes in 1 Corinthians 9, 24 to 27, that like athletes competing in the games, we should be disciplined in all things, and we should run our race so as to win. So at the end of our lives, we're going to give account for our lives, not for someone else's lives, right? We're going to give account for what we did with our life and how we responded to the calling of God. So I'm often challenged, well, why don't you do more of this? And why don't you focus more on this? And in particular, by, by very strong anti-charismatic critics, why don't you spend more time calling people out? So I've addressed yeah. that. I have been challenged not to call people out because I feel like I have fairly just scales when calling some of the foolishness out. We've stopped just because it's like you could chase down so many false teaching and it just gets exhausted. We just kind of stopped in general. We still will like occasionally call out some goofy stuff. Yet we do get challenged of like, why don't you just... Re preach the word more, bro. <laughs> and I'm like, you don't watch our videos. Like, we just put up yeah. a video Thursday night, our stream about the end times. That was majority Bible being preached, mm -hmm. right? Just going through Matthew 24, 25. So mm -hmm. people don't watch the videos, and then they challenge, and then they want you to do what they want you to do, not understanding that you have a very specific thing that God has kind of wired our assignments all different for yep. the purposes we're to serve in our generation. Straight up point. And I, I want to give a friendly challenge to my critics. All right, so let's let's start with our first stack of, of books here. Uh, you know, God's called me to do a lot of, of writing over the years. So let's let's grab our first stack here. All right, thank you, Kai. And um, commentaries. It, it it takes a lot of years to write a commentary. So I've I've got here my commentary on Jeremiah, which takes up the bulk of the volume that's sitting here on my desk. A commentary on Jeremiah and the the revised edition of the Expositors Bible Commentary, and then my commentary on the Book of Job, the Faith to Challenge God. Uh, mm. Doing a new translation of Job was probably the hardest thing academically I've ever done. And then my book, Israel's Divine Healer, 450 pages, 165,000 words uh, to this day, the most comprehensive study of divine healing in the Old Testament. So I'm just Especially wondering. A, a hundred thousand words? A hundred or something plus words. So he's writing like textbook level yep. curriculum, basically, that could be taught in colleges. Commentary on the Bible. If you guys don't know, Dr. Michael Brown has his PhD from NYU in, I want to say in Hebrew. So he's writing commentaries on Old Testament stuff because that's his area of expertise regarding language, right? Sheesh. It's crazy. For those that challenge me and say I don't spend enough time calling out charismatic error, um, which commentaries have you written or uh, major academic studies? Oh, you don't have time because you've got to concentrate <laughs> on your calling to expose charismatic nonsense. And this is not your calling. Oh, okay, got it. No, no problem. We'll just put this stack over here. Let's get stack number two out here on my stack. desk. Um, you know, Jewish ministry, that's, that's very important. In scripture. And Paul said the gospels to the Jew first and also to the Gentile, also to the Greek in Romans 1 16. And we know that Paul writes in Romans 11 verses 11 to 15, that the salvation of Israel will mean life from the dead. So surely that's something that you want to be engaging. in. so we've got this uh, study God with a 22 hour video class on countering the counter missionaries. A lot of work went into that. And then um, one, two, three, four, five, five volume series over 1500 pages on answering Jewish objections to Jesus. My That's gosh. the fruit, really, of 20 years of interaction with the Jewish community and study and, and prayer and research and writing, maybe even more combined. So we got those five volumes. And then The Real Kosher Jesus, which I wrote in response to Rabbi Shmuley Boteach's book, Kosher Jesus, The Real Kosher Jesus. Pause it. And then Resurrection. I think, I which think is Rabbi Shmuley, side note, I think that's one of the people, I, I don't want to open this can of worms, but Candace Owens had a back and forth with. Oh, goodness. Maybe, potentially. She's been talking to a couple of rabbis. Another Jewish outreach book, a real eye opener. And then to help Christians understand Jewish beliefs and practices, I've got a whole book on that, 60 questions Christians ask about Jewish beliefs and practices. And then my most translated book, Our Hands Are Stained with Blood, which deals with the history of anti-Semitism in the church. 
and then Christian anti-Semitism, which, which updates that and these critically important areas to call this out. So I'm just curious to know what you're doing. And this is aside from all the debates I've had with rabbis and thousands of pages of interaction and emails back and forth with the rabbinic community and training and teaching others at seminary level to, to respond to Jewish objections to Jesus. I'm just curious to know what you've done because you're always challenging me about what I need to be doing. So please tell me what you've been doing in Jewish evangelism and apologetics and, and combating anti-Semitism in the church and all the, oh, that's not your calling. Oh, okay, got, I got it, got it. And you're too busy putting out those hit piece videos to, to be focused on Jewish events. Got it, got it. Okay, fine, all, all clear. This is Fair amazing. enough, let me just move those out of the way. Let's, let's grab our next stack here. Stack. I can kind of see my way around it. Oh, okay. Put um, some respect on Dr. Michael wars. Brown's I mean, name. That's, that's big, that's big. We're right in the thick of the battle of the culture wars now, and, and, and how, do we, how do we reach out to those who identify as LGBTQ with compassion while standing against a destructive agenda? So Come a queer on. thing happened to America. 700 pages, 1,500 endnotes. That was based on research and writing over a six-year period. And then big question, massive question being raised and challenged, can you begin Christian? A whole book on that. And, and then another one, Outlasting the Gay Revolution, how we have to live strategies to live in such a way that we can now push back against the rising tide this man got of a whole library. Plus activism. So uh, three books on that, ma major books. And then more broadly, Saving a Sick America. What do we do to, through the Bible, through the gospel, not by taking over, but by living out our lives? How can we see moral and cultural transformation? And then Jezebel's war with America, this demonic attack on our nation, and then the silencing of the lambs uh, about cancel culture, and then just our, the revolutionary calling to follow Jesus by life or by death, the book Revolution, and the changes that need to come in the church if we're bringing out those changes, revolution in the church. So I'm, I'm, just, I'm just wondering, because you're always telling me what I need to be doing and what I should be concentrating <laughs> on, uh, please tell me about the, the books you've written, Equipping the Body on the Culture Wars, and, come on. And, and the material that you've put out to help the church combat serious deception. This makes me hopeful that I can write a book. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Right? This makes me hopeful that I can write a book. The fact that he's written this many books, and so this is where, this is where the video goes. <laughs> no this way! <laughs> no way, dude. <laughs> this is where the video goes. It just and, keeps going. And then he brings out his articles, because he writes like a gajillion oh, articles a week. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> so he just keeps going and going, and the point just quite simply being, hey, I'm busy. <laughs> Busy. I got stuff to do. I can't chase down every single, right? Every single uh, bad teacher, bad teaching, bad false prophet, all the all these sorts of things. You know, I I don't I don't have time to to do all this stuff. Let me do what I'm called to do, and you do what you're called to do. So this is the most subtle yet humble flex I have ever I've ever seen. This is amazing. He's so, just like, oh, cool. I teach the word. And you critique the folks teaching the word. You do, you do that. You do that. I'll keep writing books, changing <laughs> lives. One time for Dr. Michael Brown, man. Amazing. According to the Bible, that prayer is extremely important in terms of us being transformed from the inside out when we get aligned with God's will. For the Christians watching this channel, I want you guys to implement these spiritual disciplines in your day-to-day -day life. And the only way I've been able to do this consistently is through writing down my prayers in a prayer journal that does a few things. One, it allows me to reflect and come to God humbly and ask him to move on my behalf. And two, it allows me to document my prayers, which ultimately helped me remember the very things that I was praying for and see the hand of God tangibly in my life when he answers them. So I would urge you, consider writing down your prayers. It could be in a blank notebook. It could even be on your phone. Or you could check out the one I personally designed and used from my own quiet time and spiritual discipline that I think will be a huge blessing. It's the exact structure and system that I've used for years to pray and be more consistent in my spiritual disciplines. You can pick yours up today by clicking the link in the pinned comment below. All right, I'll see you over there. Peace.